my name is Bill Golis. I'll be presenting today. And we're going to be talking about subcontract shipping and receiving in Epicor. And why subcontract and what is it? Well, it's when we can't or won't do that here. So we're going to contract an operation, a task out to a supplier. Uh, very often this is due to being over capacity on your in-house resources. So we'll send out that overflow work so we can accept more work and meet scheduling requirements. At other times, this is for your capabilities that you just don't have in-house. Maybe it's something that you choose not to do. It makes business sense to outsource this. We don't do it enough to be an expert in it. We don't want to do it. Sometimes you know, we'll do some temporary outsourcing and see if there's demand for this, uh, for this operation, and then we'll develop that capability in-house and bring it in. So how does this work in Epicor? Well, you have to have a job that has a subcontract operation on it. So uh, within our operations, you'll see here the screen, this is a subcontract operation. And when you look in the tree of operations, you can see the little an icon is, uh, it shows it like taking a right turn as opposed to just being a half circle uh, in the arrow. And that denotes a subcontract operation. So once you have that subcontract op, you're gonna need to have a purchase order to be able to, uh, sent to your supplier. Uh, that's created from purchase order entry, of course. Uh, the key is when you are creating your line, you have to select subcontract operation and you have to uh, select the job, the assembly and the operation that you're subcontracting out. Uh, the only operations that will be available in this screen are gonna be the ones that are subcon. So if, if it's not a subcontract operation on your, uh, on your method, of, a manufacturing on your routing, then you can't send it out with a subcontract purchase order. So once you have that PO and you're, you've done the prior operations, you're gonna ship those parts and maybe those parts are pants to the subcontract supplier. I'll just, so uh, to ship from a subcontract operation, you have to go to subcontract shipment. It's, it's not a standard uh, customer shipment or miscellaneous shipment. So that's under subcontract shipment entry. That's going to be on uh, on your shipping and receiving. Uh, and you need to select your supplier at the header level and summary. And then you need to create a line that's going to identify uh, the job, uh, the assembly and operation. And that's, that's also going to be linked back to the PO here. Uh, then you're going to physically ship the, uh, that material to your vendor. They will perform the operation. And then when it comes back, you're just going to do a regular receipt. Uh, this, the Epicor system will know that it's a subcontractor shipment because of the PO and the, uh, uh, you know, that it's all linked together from the job already. When you receive this in using the standard receipt form entry, it will put those parts back into WIP at the same operation uh, that you just completed. So you're ready to move on to, to the next operation that's in-house. So let's go ahead and actually check that out in Epicor. In Kinetic 2022 we have here. So first off, let's, hey, we have a job out here for, for subcontract and let's go ahead and bring that up in our job tracker. The job is called subcontract, go figure. And here are two subcontract operations. Operation 40 is the one that we're gonna work on. You can see that little, uh, the subcontract icon and we can see the details here subcontract, uh, here's, here's your vendor, the operation, you can see your cost, your days out, which is how long it's going to take from when you ship it to when it's received back in. Uh, we can see linked on this, on the job tracker here, any purchase orders, any transactions associated. Here's the PO that we have, 4254, uh, that is linked to this particular subcontract op. And is there any transactions? Go there and there isn't any. So we're going to ship this out now and we will go to shipping, receiving and subcontractor shipment entry. And we're going to go with new and we need to have our supplier. We know that's Hades heat treating and we need to identify how we're going to ship that. So we'll say it's going to be a company truck over to Hades. And then we can go ahead and save that record. We have a pack ID. Now we need to create a line. We're going to create a new line. And here we identify the job, assembly, and operation. And we'll see here that if we search here, this will only show us the subcontract ops 20 and 40. This is 40 that we're sending out. 
we will select that. It's going to bring in our part, our part description, our quantity, as well as the PO line and release that it is linked to. Once we save that, the shipment has occurred. Now, if we go back to our job tracker, we should see that. We're going to look at op 40, which is our subcontract, and we're going to look for transactions. When I retrieve that, we're going to show a, a manufacturing to vendor. So that's from, uh, from WIP to the vendor, a transaction at 25 pieces on pack ID 105 and PO 4254. Uh, the vendor will complete this subcontract operation and then ship it back to us uh, for the receipt here. It's going to be it's going to be a regular a receipt. As I noted, there is no subcontract receiving. It's just a, a regular receipt entry. The system will know. We'll go to receive, and we're going to say new receipt. We're going to identify our PO that we, that we went on. It comes back from Hades. That's the right one. We'll make a pack slip up. It's going to be a new receipt. And then we will go to our line and create our line for receipt. There's our PO. We know that happens to be line one, release one. That will bring in all of our, our full quantity, assuming that is correct. We'll leave that as it is. And we need to mark this as received. And once we've done that, make sure it's saved. And now the material is received back in to the job. When we go take a look here at our job tracker now, if we refresh that, we should see, let's go back to our operation 40, retrieve. There we go. Now that's received back into the job for those 825 pieces. It shows the pack ID, the PO, or the, yeah, you know, here's the pack slip that it came back on and the PO that it's associated with. And then, we, then you're ready to do any subsequent operations or if the job is complete here, then we're ready to either receive the inventory or ship from the job. And that is subcontract operation shipping and receiving in Epicor Kinetic. It's a pretty straightforward uh, concept. And the one key thing to remember is you must ship from subcontractor shipment entry. <clears throat> Eddie says that they have a question about BOL. How can it be tied to subcontractor shipment entry? So and with a bill of lading, you can just select. In fact, here, let's go ahead and verify that because I, I haven't I haven't had that question before. So this is 105. If we go to the, a bill of lading here, I'm going to create a new bill of lading. And then from here, we're going to link the pack. A customer on here. And so it has to be a customer, not a supplier here. You know, I'd have to test that out, but I believe you should be able to link it here. Uh, if we, a customer, and let's go ahead and make sure that this works. Ace, and we're going to say link pack. Yes, so this is only going to, I don't believe you're going to be able to do this without setting up. Again, I'm going to have to double check that and verify it because it says you can, you can link a supplier here, but it did not accept it here. A question from Roy. I see that these are classic screens. Is that your choice or are there issues with the kinetic screens? It was my choice because uh, this is what I had handy. So I'm not, I'm not aware of any issues. From Paul, variation on the quick ship question. Does the subcontractor shipment entry produce any type of package label? For example, if I'm shipping via a courier, the courier will need an address label and the recipient will want an additional, like my PO or their sales order number. Does Kinetic slash EPEN out of the box provide a label like this? Yep, I'm showing it right here. We can create the label at the subcontract shipment. And uh, this is going to be the base label, assuming that this one's set up. Yeah, but you can customize this to have what you need on it. But just right. like on a regular uh, shipment, you can. Want more Code of Bears Lunch and Learn? Check out our channel for more videos or contact us on our website for registration information.